I don't think there is anything that smells better than freshly baked bread. So don't be intimidated. You can do this and the end result is so much better than anything you could get at the store. I'm Lauren from tastebetterfromscratch.com. Let's get baking. All right, you guys, to get started, let's talk about the wheat we're going to use for our whole wheat bread. You're gonna find two common types at the grocery store, which is regular whole wheat flour, which is made from red whole wheat, and then white whole wheat flour. So both of these are 100% whole wheat. I prefer the taste of the white whole wheat just because it's a little milder, but either of these will work great. So grab a mixer, I'm using a stand mixer. You can do this in a bowl with your hands. You don't need to have a fancy mixer like this. Um, this just makes it easier to knead the dough, but you can knead the dough by hand. Okay, we're gonna start by adding four and a half cups of flour to our mixer. Now we're gonna add our yeast. I'm using instant yeast. Um, it just works better for the short rise times of this bread and stir that together. And now we're adding warm water. We're adding just, just shy of three cups of warm water. So what we're making right now is called a bread sponge. This is kind of the first step in activating the yeast to give it a head start to help the bread rise and have a really nice soft texture. Now we're going to cover the bowl with a towel and set this aside for 15 minutes to rest. Just like that, let's check on this bread sponge. Looks perfect, it's risen a little bit. We're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. We've got a fourth cup of butter, melted butter, not too warm, I melted it, let it cool a little bit. We've got one third cup of honey. This is my favorite combination with whole wheat bread is the sweetness of the honey helps to give the bread such a great flavor. One tablespoon of vital wheat gluten. This is really important in wheat bread because wheat bread has a lower density of gluten than white bread does. So this is really gonna help make the difference in wheat bread that is dense and not very soft to bread that is really moist and soft and lasts for a long time. This vital wheat gluten is vital. And then we need two tablespoons of Greek yogurt. I like to throw this in because it just adds, again, a little bit of moistness to the bread because we really want soft, moist wheat bread. All right, and last, we're adding one tablespoon of kosher salt for flavor enhancement. That's it, we're gonna start mixing this up. Now we're gonna start adding some more flour. So the key to flour with bread is never, there's not an exact amount of flour that you want for bread. You just have to look at the dough, feel the dough, till it feels right. We're gonna start by adding one cup of flour as we mix the dough. As you add the flour and mix the dough, you want to see the dough start to pull away from the sides and the bottom of the bowl. So our dough is pulled away from the bottom and sides of the bowl. We're gonna let this knead. I'm using my stand mixer for about five minutes. If you're doing this by hand, put it on the counter and knead it by hand for five to 10 minutes till the dough is really smooth and elastic. So check the dough while you're mixing. You want to touch it with a clean fingertip and it should be just barely sticky. We want it to be really soft, but not overly sticky. So if it's still pretty sticky, add some more flour and keep mixing. All right, our dough is ready. We're gonna take it out of this bowl and put it on our countertop. Lots of people like to flour their countertop. I like to uh, just lightly grease mine, just really lightly with nonstick cooking spray because I don't want to add any extra flour to the dough. Grease my hands a little bit too, just to help me get the dough out. This is the fun part. Different than white bread, we don't have to let this rise right now. We get to just shape our loaves and then they'll just rise one time in the pan. So we are gonna divide our dough into two equal pieces. If you're a total perfectionist, you can grab a scale. I'm just estimating uh, two equal size pieces. And I just use my hands to press it out into a big rectangle, like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it into a rectangle because we're gonna roll it into a log like so. We've got a nice little bread baby. We're gonna put this dough ball into a greased bread pan. I'm particular about my bread pans. 
I like the ones that are eight and a half by four and a half inches. You could also use a standard nine by five inch loaf. I like them just the, the slightly smaller loaf because the bread bakes up a little bit bigger, but either loaf pan will work. So just put your bread dough right in here, kind of press it into the corners a little bit. That's it, we're gonna cover this with a greased piece of plastic wrap so that it doesn't stick to the dough as it rises because we're gonna need to peel that off and you don't want any of the plastic wrap sticking to the dough. You could also cover this with a really light towel, but this is just what I always do, so I'm showing you what I always do. I spray it with some nonstick cooking spray and I just very lightly drape it over the pans, lightly drape it so that it gives the dough some room to push up and rise. All right, that's it. We're gonna set these beautiful loaves aside for about 45 minutes to an hour. You're looking for the bread dough to rise just barely above the tops of the pan. Then we're gonna stick them in the oven. All right, our loaves have risen beautifully. We are going to gently uncover them. We're gonna stick these in a cold oven. You heard me, a cold oven. And then turn the heat on to 350 and they're gonna take about 35 to 40 minutes to bake. Look how gorgeous these loaves look. All right, we are going to carefully remove them and put them on a wire cooling rack to cool completely. Don't be like me, use oven mitts. All right, we are gonna let these cool on our cooling rack. When they're hot, I like to smooth a little bit of butter on top just to make them look nice and shiny and gorgeous. And it's not gonna taste bad either. This smell of this bread takes me right back to my mom's kitchen. I love this whole wheat bread because it's just as soft and delicious as white bread, but you've got all the whole grains. Um, nothing's better than putting homemade jam on it. I have tons of homemade jam recipes on the website. Slather some butter on there and you will be in heaven. This really is the best homemade bread, you guys, especially with homemade strawberry jam on it. This is my jam. This is so good. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll leave the full recipe for you guys in the notes below. And be sure to check out all my other recipe videos that taste better from scratch. So good.